Are you considering using Goodjode to create your next game? Well, hold on for a moment. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the pros and cons of using Goodjode as a game engine. You've probably heard the arguments on both sides, with some praising its ease of use and growing user base, while others express concerns about its limitations. I recently posted a short video discussing Goodjode's physics and the response was overwhelming. It became a hot topic, sparking a lot of debate and curiosity. So I decided to delve deeper and bring you with this comprehensive video where we'll explore whether Goodjode is truly the best choice for your game development journey. Stick around until the end to discover whether you should stick with Goodjode or explore alternative engines. I'm eager to hear your thoughts, so don't forget to share your opinions in the comment section. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's dive right into one of the key aspects of using Goodjode, its physics engine. Now, before we get started, I want to make it clear that Goodjode's physics capabilities are indeed powerful and versatile. However, one point that often comes up in discussions is that the default physics settings in Goodjode might not work as expected for game development. Some users have expressed frustration with the default physics behavior in Goodjode. But here's the thing, this perception largely depends on the specific requirements of your game and the level of realism you're aiming for. Goodjode provides various parameters and settings that allow you to fine-tune the physics behavior. By customizing these settings, you can often achieve more accurate physics simulations tailored to your specific game mechanics. When it comes to my personal opinion, I believe that the default physics behavior in Goodjode is just not appealing for most projects. The reason why is because I believe that in most games that use physics, the default physics settings can make objects behave in unexpected or unrealistic ways. To illustrate this point, I came across an interesting video where a developer attempted to create a bowling game in Goodjode. As soon as he added a rigid body, the result was far from realistic or suitable for a bowling game. He had to spend a significant amount of time trying to fix and fine-tune the physics behavior. This highlights the trade-off between the initial ease of setting up a project in Goodjode and the time spent addressing these specific physics issues. Another example can be seen in this video, where the default settings in Goodjode for a 2D project also proved to be problematic for many game projects. This video then demonstrates instances where the default physics behavior did not align well with the desired gameplay mechanics. These examples emphasize the importance of considering the default physics behavior in Goodjode and how it may require additional time and effort to achieve the desired results. While Goodjode offers the flexibility to adjust the physics settings, it's worth nothing that it can take some fine tuning to ensure a more realistic and satisfying physics simulation for your specific game. If you are looking to pursue a career as a game developer and seek traditional employment in the industry, you may notice that job listing predominantly emphasizes experience with Unity or Unreal Engine, while good job experience is rarely mentioned. The dominance of Unity and Unreal Engine in the show market can be attributed to their long-standing presence and established user bases. Many companies, especially larger studios, have already integrated these engines into their development pipelines and projects. As a result, they often prioritize candidates who possess prior experience and familiarity with these industry standard engines. This discrepancy may lead aspiring Goodjode developers to question whether investing time and effort into learning and mastering Goodjode is a viable career path. While it's true that finding a formal show specifically focusing on Goodjode may be challenging, it's essential to consider the broader context and potential opportunities. On the other hand, if you're an indie developer, which means that you are your own boss in a way, this shouldn't significantly affect you. As an indie developer, you have the freedom to choose which tools, including game engines, you want to use for your project. This flexibility allows you to explore Goodjode and leverage its features to create unique and engaging games. However, it's important to acknowledge that as an indie developer, you may also need to have a formal show to sustain yourself financially. This is because the revenue generated solely from your games may not always be sufficient to cover all expenses. 
Finding a balance between your indie game development in the Avers and a formal show can be crucial for your final stability and overall career growth. It allows you to gain practical experience, enhance your skills and found your indie projects. It's worth nothing that many successful indie developers started their journey while working full-time or part-time jobs to support themselves while building their game development skills and portfolio. On the other hand, Goodout offers a range of exciting features that make it a standout choice for game development. One of its greatest advantages is its is exceptional ease of use. With a user-friendly interface and a straightforward learning curve, even beginners can quickly grasp the engine's mechanics. What's more, Goodout's programming language, GDScript, is based on Python, which is known for its simplicity. By learning GDScript, developers not only gain proficiency in Goodout, but also acquire valuable skills in a widely used programming language. So it's a win-win situation. Another remarkable aspect of, of Goodjode is its vibrant and supportive community. The community actively contributes to the engine's development from bug detection and fixes to translating documentation. Take for example the recent release of Goodjode 4.1, which saw over 300 people contributing to its success. This level of collaboration and growth speaks volumes about the strength and dedication of the Goodjode community. Who knows, with such momentum, it's entirely possible that Goodot could become the go-to engine used worldwide by countless companies in the future. Moreover, one of Goodot's standout features is its impressive hardware compatibility. Unlike some alternatives, Goodot can run smoothly even on computers that are over 15 years old. This aspect is particularly advantageous for developers on a limited budget or those who may not have access to high-end hardware. In fact, Goodot has taken hardware flexibility a step further with the recent release of its Android version. Now, aspiring game developers can create games directly on their phones, opening up a, a, a world of possibilities for on-the-go creativity. Finally, I would like to talk shortly about some issues that YouTube Shorts have about this topic. To understand this point, you should have watched this YouTube Short, the link is in the description below. As they are named, they are short videos. So as I can only upload videos below 1 minute long, these hot topics, which as you can see require a long time to explain, sometimes can lead to misunderstanding. Indeed, that misunderstanding, which lead to comments, is the main reason why that short blew up. However, I didn't really feel comfortable with the comments because I was just giving an opinion based in facts. Also, there isn't a lot of people who really understood the point of the video. In the video, I clarified that I didn't think Goodjob was a bad engine. I mentioned, that I mentioned that many times and even named some advantages of it. Most people only focus on the very beginning or in the title of the short and after that they misunderstood the rest of the video. Anyway, I hope you now understand my point. In conclusion, exploring the pros and cons of using Goodjode as a game engine reveals a nuanced picture. While the default physics behavior in Goodjode may require additional fine-tuning to achieve desired results, the engine offers powerful capabilities that can be customized to suit specific game mechanics. When it comes to traditional employment in the industry, the dominance of Unity and Unreal Engine may pose challenges for good job developers, but the indie game development scene provides opportunities for creative freedom and self-expression. Goodjobs is for use, the supportive community, its compatibility with a wide range of hardware and the valuable skills acquired through learning GDScript make it an appealing choice for developers at all levels. Whether you decide to continue using Goodjode or explore alternative engines, it's important to consider your specific needs, goals, and the type of project you want to create. Remember, the journey of game development is as unique as the game themselves, and the engine you choose should align with your creative vision and aspirations. Embrace the opportunities, learn from the challenges, and keep pushing the boundaries of game development. We hope this video has provided valuable insights to help you make informed decisions on your game development journey. Thank you for joining us and don't forget to share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Happy game development and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.